Hi, hey everybody. The purpose of this video today is to just kind of guide you through class. So you'll use it at the start and then hopefully there will be time at the end of the period for you to be able to work on the homework assignment as a group. So once everybody's done with this part of it, you can shift over to that. All right, so to start off, just grab a piece of paper and list it from A to F and you can write down your responses to these questions as you go. So independence is going to occur when the intersection of two events is the same as if you multiply them together. Um, so if you say that event A given event B, you end up with just event A. Okay, so that means that B has no effect on A. Okay, so going through this, let's see. The college freshmen were surveyed to determine whether they were using Apple's iPhone and iPad. Findings of the survey displayed in this table. So first off, how many freshmen were surveyed? You can find out right in the bottom corner, so 38. Probability of using an iPhone. So you want to take that iPhone total and calculate the probability that somebody used an iPhone if they are surveyed at random. Same thing with iPad. Then the probability of an iPhone and an iPad would be an intersection. So we want to find that spot. We also want the probability of an iPhone times the probability of an iPad. All right, so if you go through those four, try to write a response down for each one based off of this table. You can pause here and let you know how you did. Okay, so the probability of finding an, of having an iPhone would be the 232 in the iPhone row. All right, that's a combination of those that also have an iPad or not. Total iPhones, 232 out of 348. Total iPads, so that's found down here in the Yes iPad column. The Yes iPad column adds up to 186 out of 348. The iPhone and iPad would be the singular cell, 124 out of 348. And then multiplying the two probabilities together from the first two, from B and C, you end up with 0.3563. So what happened there is the intersection of the two had the same probability as if you multiply their probabilities separately. When that happens, it means that they're independent. It means that neither one had an effect upon the other. So if the probability of, inter of A and B is the same as if you multiply them separately, then they're independent. All right, so part D would be the intersection. Part E is that multiplication of probabilities, they give you the same result. So therefore, these are independent events. Now, is this true in real life? You could make an argument that people who have Apple products have a lot of Apple products, and there really would be a relationship between those that have one and not the other. But with this experimental data, which you know, may or may not be indicative of how it is in most places, this is showing that they are in fact independent of each other. But your real life experience may say otherwise. All right, so let's go over to the homework assignment from or classwork and homework from, from yesterday and just make sure that everything is good here. So the odds in favor of each outcome if a die is rolled. And I'm not gonna explain each one here, I'm just gonna let this sit for a minute and you can pause and look things up to make sure you did them the right way. If anything is wrong on this page, please circle it or put a star next to it so that we can discuss the next time we're together. So just mark it up and make sure that that is ready to go next time. Okay, and then the bottom section, starting with number eight. And then 13 and 14. If you missed something, just rewind, just go back a little bit in the video and you can catch up there. But again, please mark anything that you did not understand or that you did not get right. Okay, so the plan is to go over the counting principle from pages 18 and 19, and then homework page 20, which you can start in class if there is time remaining, if you'd like to work together on that. All right, so on page 18, we're gonna work on how to count the number of outcomes for very large sample spaces. Examples such as lottery, the possible phone numbers in a list, or a number of license plates, things that have a lot of different ways to arrange them. So the following problem is discussed in example one. If a four-digit number is randomly selected from all the four-digit numbers formed from these seven digits alone, so not using eight, nine, or zero, what is the probability 
but that selected number is 2763. So there's a lot of numbers that can be formed. There's only one that's exactly 2763. We started to make a list of all the possibilities after the first few we gave up. So think about this. If you try to make a list of all the possible four-digit numbers, what, what, what are you going to run into as a, um, a negative when you're doing that? You just write that down. All right, so I'm thinking that the biggest negative to this, why does it keep giving me a Hang on a second. Okay. I think the biggest negative to this is that that list is going to be huge, and it'll take a long time to make. It'll be easy to make mistakes, so it's too cumbersome to really be useful there. So if he started a tree diagram, what problem would he encounter with a tree? All right. So with a tree, it's going to be an extremely large tree. It's going to be cluttered because every single level of the tree is going to have seven branches. So you make seven branches, then off of each of those seven, you have seven. So we're already at 49 and we're only on the second digit. Okay, so moving on, Nick was thinking of a tree diagram. He asked himself, how many branch points will this tree have? So this is the best way to think about this. Instead of making the tree, consider what the tree would look like and just use those numbers. So on that first branch, there would be seven different ways that that could branch out. And then the second digit, since we're allowed to repeat in this situation, will also have seven possibilities. And then the third digit will have seven and so will the fourth. So if we just multiply all that out, it comes out to 2,401. Is that written correctly? Okay, and so the probability that the number is 2763 then would be the one time it's right out of the 2401 ways that we could arrange that, those four numbers. So this is called the fundamental counting principle if we multiply all the different ways that a single decision can happen. How many four-digit numbers could we make with the digits 1 through 7 if you could not use anything more than once? Well, now the decision chart changes just a little bit. We're still going to have four decisions to make. Digit 1 could have seven choices, but now I'm not allowed to repeat. So I can't use that same digit I used here, so I'm down to six choices. And then I'm down to five choices, and then I'm down to four choices. So that total is going to be much less because I'm not using seven every time. This comes out to just 840 ways. Still way too many to list or to make a tree for, but that is the calculation for it. Okay, so take a second to try this. You can pause, and when I say second, I probably need more like two to three minutes to try each of these using the same concepts, and then I'll come back and explain. All right, so nine disks, each of them has a number. How many different three-digit numbers can be formed? So hopefully you made a three-digit decision chart. And the first decision, there are nine options. In the second decision, there would then be eight options. And the third decision, there would be seven options because I'm not replacing the disks. That's the key to that. That's how you know that it's not 999. It's because we're not replacing, so it's one fewer every time. You multiply those together, you get 504. The second one here. This does allow a repeat situation because there are three wheels, each of which are one to nine. Wheel is spun once, the arrow is recorded. If we spin again, we're not taking something off the wheel. It's the same wheel that's being spun. So every time we spin the wheel, there are nine different things that it could land on. And so nine times nine times nine gives me 729. So the difference between them is the repetition. You are uh, reading critically to decide, is repetition allowed or is it not? If it is allowed, then we're not going to change the number we're using. If it is not allowed because there's no replacement, then we would decrease that number every time. All right, over page 19, Marco's selecting classes for next year. It's got English, physics, government, pre-calc, Spanish, and journalism. Six period day. So if he wants, he will have one of those classes each period. How many different schedules are possible? Let's answer that question first before we do the probability problems. So I have six periods in the day. So I'm going to set that up first. Right? There are six classes I can choose from for period one. Once I have chosen period one's class, I'm not going to take that class a second time during the day, so I'm down to five classes for period two. Then four for period three, and so I'm down until the only one I have left has to be last period. If you multiply all those together, you should get 720. 
Okay, so the probability he will get first period pre-calc, well, pre-calc is one choice out of those six choices that I'm making for first period, so that's one sixth. Probability he will get, he will get both first period pre-calc and second period physics. All right, well, first period pre-calc is one out of six, but then it's one out of five for the second one because these are independent events. I can, or dependent events, compounded. I can multiply those probabilities and it gives me 1 30th. Okay, now the next thing we need to do is find that factorial button on your calculator. Well, the graphing calculators, which most of you have, what you're going to do is press the math button and you have a series of menus across the top, one of which says PRB, stands for probability. And within the probability sub menu, there is a factorial, I believe it's option four. And when you type that, you will have the number already typed, then you have a factorial symbol typed, looks like an exclamation point. What that's going to do is give you your results a little bit faster. So let's go through what it's asking us to do here. 8 factorial, 7 factorial, 6 factorial. And what you can do, instead of having to go back into the menu every time, let's say you get, get 8 factorial on the screen, and it says 40,320. So if you hit second enter, it'll pull up eight factorial again, but it'll give you an option to edit it. And it's easier to do that and go back and type seven over the top of eight, believe eight factorial, than it is to go back into the math menu every single time you want to do a new one. So hopefully you can use that shortcut and make it at least go a little faster. So 50, 40, and 720, and five factorial would be 120, and four factorial would be 24, 3 factorial is 6, 2 factorial is 2, and 1 factorial is 1. Okay. Now, if, that, if, any, if you did not get one of those, go back and retype it to, to make sure that you can. Which result is the same as the number of multiples possible schedules? Well, we said it was 720. So that's 6 factorial equals 720. What do I think it means? What do you think it means? If it's the same as what we did for Marco's schedule. You write something down. You pause, write something down, come on back. Okay, what it means is that we are multiplying all the numbers from six on down to one. So any factorial number is going to be equal to that number times the number below it, times the number below that, all the way down until you multiply them by one. Okay, so the bigger this number gets, the more factors there are in that product, the bigger the answer is going to be. And you can see, as we went from two up to eight, it went from two to 40,000. So it gets big pretty fast. Explain why four factorial gives the correct solution to the number of ways to arrange the letters in math. Well, the number of ways to arrange the letters in math, I've got four choices. My second part of the arrangement, I have three choices left because I already chose a letter in, in the first slot. Then I have two, then I have one. And so that gives me the same thing as four factorial, which is 24 ways. So if I'm limited to those four, picture like Scrabble tiles. Those are four tiles. I can arrange them on the table in 24 different ways. All right, last thing on this page, simplifying factorials. So knowing what n factorial means can help you do some calculations pretty quickly. So, and sometimes when you put factorials in your calculator, it says overflow. And that just means it looks too big for it to handle. So there are times when you actually do want to do some hand work on the side and then go back to the calculator once you've simplified. So nine factorial, for example, comes out to 362,880. And six factorial comes out to 720. So if I divide those two, 362, 880, by 720, I get an answer that is 504, all right? So the way I would simplify this, I'd say nine times eight times seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. And the bottom would be six times five times four times three times two times one. All right, where are the commonalities? And you should see that we can cross out the sixes, we can cross out the fives, we can cross out the fours, and all the way down until we get to the ones. 
So all that's left is the 9, the 8, and the 7. Right? And that total comes out to 504 as well. So that's over 1. Any time the top factorial is bigger than the bottom factorial, you will always cancel all of the bottom ones because the numbers from 6 down to 1 are contained within the numbers from 9 down to 1. So all that's left over is the difference. It's the difference between these numbers. So 9, 8, and 7 are the only things that are different between these two. And that's what's left over. So for the simplification technique here, I'll write this one once. <laughs> I really don't want to do it this way every time. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, over. I'm just going to start with 8 and take it all the way down to 1. So these eight, 8 numbers cancel with these 8 numbers. And that leaves me with 10 times 9. And I can do this without ever going into the calculator and using the factorial button. It's just faster, honestly. So let's look at this one. I have a 20 and I have an 18. Which two numbers in 20 factorial are different from the numbers in 18 factorial? And just write those down. Just pause and write those down. Okay, the only numbers that are different are 20 and 19. So all the other ones would have canceled, which means this entire 18 factorial has been canceled out with the last 18 numbers of the numerator. The bottom is 2 factorial, which is just 2 times 1. So now I think this is pretty simple to, to, to reduce because the 20 and the 2 can become 10 and 1, and 19 times 10 is 190. So again, a larger problem that I was able to do mentally. All right, this one. The, the tricky thing here, you don't want to fall into the trap of saying, well, 4 and 3 is the same as 7. It doesn't work that way. So you have to think of them individually. So if I compare the 7 and the 4, just the 7 and the 4, the difference would be the 7, the 6, and the 5. So that takes out the last 4. That's the same as taking out the 4 factorial. The denominator still has a 3 times 2 times 1. Well, the 3 times 2 would be 6, and that takes out the 6. And so I have 35. So treat them separately. If you have multiple parts to your denominator, treat them separately and then reevaluate. This one, I have a 75, I have a 74, and I have a 73. Everything else from 72 down to 1 will be contained in the denominator as well. And I can't multiply that in my head. I would then go to the calculator. But it's fast. even this, this is way faster than going through the math menu twice. So 405,150 is my result. And I've simplified that factorial without using a calculator. Try to do that when you can. It just makes the problem go a little bit faster. All right, so we're over to page 20 now, and you can work together on that, and I'll expect that that is ready to go for the next class.